So from what I can gather, Yin's really liked the cave table. And then you kind of like the tensegrity chair. So regardless of what you think on this one, I'm combining the two and we're gonna build a cave chair. Let's go. So some of you have been requesting me to do 3D models like all of our other friends here in the makerspace. Well, this is too ridiculous and there's zero chance that I could model this. So here's the concept of the chair though. Like the cave table, we're gonna do some sides with some acrylic to support it, a top, a seat, a bottom, armrests, squirreliness all around, ridiculous glue up, and we're gonna do it all from one live edge slab. This is gonna be a tough one, but I'm super excited about the challenge. Let's get to breaking down some wood. So now that we have taken a large slab of a tree and turned it into smaller chunks like this, the intent here is to create a bunch of laminations and from those laminations, I'll be able to kind of assemble this chair. I've never done anything like this before and structurally I'm kind of terrified. I do think I'm gonna be able to get it done. Uh, so we're gonna start on this part here. This is my very, very rudimentary drawing for the arms, uh, which will be this part here. So we got to get a bunch of laminations that way, come up here and then create some sort of a stabilized arm and then create parts that come down off of that as well. This, sh this should get interesting. The tricky part here is the arm. Okay, so to do this, I think what I need to do is we'll glue up this panel here. Okay, then this will be our arm and then I'll have this sandwiched here. Okay, and then I'll be able to take shorter parts, cut these in half, and lay them between, like that, coming down, and then that way I can get, you know, carve, carve, into there, this will be able to be carved, and I'll put some filler blocks in there just so I can taper down into it. I think this is a good idea. That'll give me a strong enough arm and a shoulder over here. I'm just gonna cut those in half. Cross cut slid. So we're gonna glue up all these panels and kind of like sub panels and then panel the panel together in order to make bigger panels. But before we get to bigger panels, we gotta make smaller panels. I hope you guys are following. Squiggles, never swirls. So this will be one small panel assembly that will then get glued to another large panel assembly. With something that's weird, I'm pretty lucky here. My glue ups don't have to be perfect because I'm gonna be carving everything. And the reason I'm gluing things up this way and not long ways is because I'm gonna be carving things this way and I need to be carving with a grain. Jordan, can I get some more clamps, please? All right, Yens, so the next phase is kind of this, uh, it's the glue ups. They're, they're just gonna get weird. And stop staring at my chesticles. We got a new concept hoodie we're working on here. The sleeves were kind of tight for my big ass arms, but let me know what you think. If you like it, we'll launch it. Probably gonna launch it anyway, but I still wanna know what you think. We're gonna do some stuff to it again, but we gotta punch the day in the face more. 2020 is trying to get us, we gotta get it back. So getting back to what's important in building things, I'm making the armrest here and I'm going to glue this up in multiple parts so that way things work out, at least in my brain, the way I want them to. This is our seat. Our seat will get datoed in here, okay? This is our arm rest rail. And this is our armrest. Our armrest, we're just going to glue those things up in pieces like this. And then I'm going to add some more blocking in so I can carve that thing down a little bit more. And then we can get to, you know, starting to assemble this thing before I start making too many weird shapes. This is where the, the brain just starts to turn to mush. And this should just be the part that, I mean, everything's long here. This is gonna be the part, I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. But this is the part that's gonna support the armrest. It'll make sense here, I think, when it becomes an actual chair. You gotta remember, Yins get to see the thumbnail before I post this. <laughs> I'm working through this as I go. So for those of Yins following along at home, one, I appreciate and love all of you. 
for giving us your precious time. Two, this is kind of what we're working with. So I've got these things glued up. This is an armrest. The armrest needs to go down here because between the seat and the top of the armrest, you need to have a nine inch maximum clearance there. But in order to do so, I have to relieve some of this stuff first in order for my caves, stalagmites and tights and all that good stuff to interact with one another. But before I do any of that, I need to cut my joinery because it's impossible to cut joinery on things that aren't square. And by impossible, I mean it's possible, but it just really, really sucks and gets squirrely. So let's cut these things down to size and cut a little bit of joinery. All right, so like I said before, in order to put our armrest on after we glue this up, I need to relieve these parts. I'm gonna do that while it's flat, and then we're gonna cut the seat pan and uh, data the seat pan into our side parts, and we could get that glued up. So I'm pretty much just gonna kind of do like I've, I've done all of these. Some just random. I know Bobby Duke's absolutely out of his mind, but I wonder if this is how he feels on every project. Just have just being a madman. Now that that is in clampity clamps, we're gonna be working on these bottom feet, foot socket things. In order to utilize materials properly, we're gonna to have to bandsaw out our curves and then use them in negative space together. Yep, that looks great. What do you think, Sam? So we've got some parts taped together. Let's make magic. While we got everything in glue up, we're creating the sockets here for the feet. Because of the way I'm building this, I'm gonna be able to carve all these things to shape. We're gonna get a little bit of a socket here. I'm gonna cut the parts that are gonna hold up the seat. They'll fit right in there. Be able to karate chop that stuff. I'll put a piece in the bottom and then that'll just get epoxy down. I wanna get these sides in first. Now for a little glue. All right, my good people, two things. One, new merch available, link down in the description and stop staring at my boobies. Two, we've got the legs are dry, or feet or whatever we wanna call these, foot sockets. I'm gonna start carving these while the rest of the seat's dry and then we're gonna go fart with the armrests and the backrest. So it's time to put on my spacesuit, drop my Festool and get squirrely. All right, so I've got the bases done. We're out of clamps here, fortunately, and it's always fortunate when the thing doesn't fall apart when you take it out of clamps. So the way I built it, I wanted to be able to carve it as it was all together instead of carving in pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put on the old space suit and I will probably see Yins in no less than eight hours. Pray for me. Okay, kiddos, I hope you can hear me in my spacesuit. I might never take this thing off. I don't know about you guys, but I think we should start a trend here. Hashtag team spacesuit. I did toot though, went straight up into my nose. I was warned about that. But back to the project. I had to wait till I had these parts carved and kind of shaped before I could put the arms on because I want the arms to semi kind of reflect, you know, what's going on. Um, with my, I should probably not have other marks on there, huh? I want them to morph into one another. This is starting to look a lot more like flames and a lot less like a cave, so if the title was wrong, that's why. If it's the same, that's also why. But don't blame me for getting squirrely. You guys know what you signed up for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that shape roughly on the bandsaw, and then um, 
I gotta figure out how I'm gonna carve those. So this thing's taking a very weird direction and I don't hate it. We're gonna glue it up and then I'm gonna finish the carving after it's assembled so I can get some like uh, some cleaner lines on it. All in all, I think it's, I think it's looking pretty sweet. It's uh, the most organic thing I think I've ever made. And, I, and I've made some organic stuff. Curveball. All right, so originally I was gonna float the back but I'm really, I'm actually kind of liking, I'm liking the way this, this is taking shape. This is just kind of how the way things go. So the back will also have this like, I don't even know what the hell to call this anymore, kind of concept going. And it's pretty easy to morph things once I have it glued up. So like the back will have just as much movement. So in order to make this thing a little more chair-like, we're just gonna clamp it onto these arms. And I think that that'll work. We'll see. If not, then I can still cut the whole thing off and go back to what I was gonna originally do. So for those of you that are asking, anything that has this like jankified, squirrely ass assembly like this, we're gonna reinforce everything after I do carving with screws and then we'll pin all the heads and then I can shape them down to make them look pretty. Um, but I kinda wanna get the whole thing put together first. That way I have an opportunity to see it in scale before I start adding fasteners. Also, when when I carve, I don't like to add fasteners until I absolutely have to. Because um, if I carve through a fastener, then you can see it, whether it's a domino or a biscuit or anything like that. All these are in the plans, yeah, yeah. So I can't wait for all of you that want to build one of these because I will get someone who does. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a, a little bit of a better option. It didn't fall apart and crumble to pieces overnight, and that is always a goal here. So we're gonna get this thing out of clamps, continue kind of carving and shaping, get to final sanding, and then in seven days when I'm done sanding, we might be able to get some finishing legs on this thing, but I'm, I'm super excited. This is gonna be awesome. We are on to the final stages. We're gonna cut the foot, the feet, the legs, the things that are gonna hold up the chair, and then we gotta mount it, and then we're getting to finish, and this thing should be ready to either look terrible or blow minds. But first, let's cut up this $500 sheet of acrylic. So I think as far as like carving goes, we're good. I'm liking the way this thing's looking and pretty much everything else left with this doesn't require much skill. But speaking of skill, I'm gonna thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes and courses for everything creative. Everyone knows that I love to absolutely crush and dominate anything I put my uh, time and effort into in life. And one of those things being productivity. I'm loving Skillshare for their productivity course. It's something that I dove into with Thomas Franks and it's been amazing. It's really helped change the dynamic of our business and my life. And because I love Skillshare and Skillshare loves Yin's guys, first thousand people who you click the link below, get premium service on Skillshare, which is absolutely amazing. So stop being complacent, stop taking your time trying to get better at stuff, put some time and effort into it, sign up for Skillshare, smash that link below, and crush it. Going outside the box with this one. Black Chem Aqua, it's a lacquer. If you ask me in the comments what color or what the finish is, I will not respond because it is right there. Rewind it, watch it again. Let us spray! So this thing has drastically turned from a cave chair to a flaming chair of complete absurdity and I'm freaking loving it. Last thing we gotta do is flame polish our acrylic, which is uh, quite awesome. Join me. So 
keep these in place, we just gushed a little bit of epoxy down there. And now, to screw them in. That's gonna be a wrap on this one, you guys. This thing turned out awesome and spooky and it's, it's usable because I'm using it right now for our next project. It's gonna be insane. And if you wanna see another insane project, click here or subscribe to see whatever the hell I'm about to do with this bucket of epoxy.